Because I promise you, if you go too deep on an energy deficit for too long, there's going to be a point where things sort of level off and everything will stop. What's up, everybody? How we doing? Welcome back to the channel. Yet another broadcast. And today, I'm going to get right to the point. I'm going to answer the age-old question that people have been asking for generations. For hundreds, possibly thousands of years. Throughout the course of time, through all of human existence, mankind has posed the question, should I cut or should I bulk? Should I act in a manner that is conducive to dropping body fat currently, or should I act in a manner that builds muscle currently? Good question. And I'm just going to tell you what I believe through logic and rational thought and personal experience and the experience of 30 years of working with people in the gym and working with their diets and helping them accomplish one or the other. And in some cases at very, very high levels, i.e. physique competitors and the like. I've often said you're either gaining or you're cutting. You need to choose that course of action and act accordingly because it's very difficult to gain muscle and burn fat at the same time to any great degree, especially if you're more of a seasoned lifter. Now, if you're brand new to strength training in those initial weeks, possibly month or two, you're going to be building some muscle and you're going to be burning some fat at the same time because the body is becoming accustomed to this new stimulus. But over time, fairly quickly, that's going to slow. And then you're back to the age old question, should I be eating in a manner to gain muscle or eating in a manner to get lean and burn body fat? What's going to be of, of paramount importance to me at this point. So here's what I believe. I believe it is always best to build from a point of leanness, meaning as precious and important as muscle is, and we're going to get to that, the reduction of excess body fat is also of huge importance. You need to get lean. And being lean lends to metabolic health, the alleviation of so many disorders and distresses and diseases in the body. It's good from a psychological factor. It's just better to be leaner in every way. And then once you get to a point of greatly reduced body fat, then we can make some adjustments and start pointing the needle in the direction of focusing a little harder on building up some real hard lean muscle now, which should be everyone's goal, male, female, young, old, it doesn't matter. So what I would do or what I truly believe and what I would point you toward, I think the biggest lever you can pull, the biggest rock in the jar out of the gate is that reduction of body fat to a point of healthy body fat levels. And if you're a guy and you're tr really trying to get lean and you're trying to push toward a goal, I think you should be sub 14% body fat. And if you really want to be in that, you know, 1% in that elite category, then I think you should be somewhere between like 8 and 12% body fat. 
That's a level of body fat that you would be happy walking down any beach. That's a level of body fat to where you will have exposed abdominals. And once you get to that level of body fat, yes, you may not have the musculature that you would like or that, that visual you have in your head of what you would like to look like. But that for me is step one because you're still going to reveal the level of muscularity that you have. Leaner always looks better than fatter. And then once that is achieved, you can start pushing towards building some muscle from that point of leanness. And because you've worked so hard to get lean, the likelihood of you doing some dirty bulk and eating a bunch of shit, though in more of a maintenance or surplus energy intake, you're going to be far more mindful to how you consume nutrients because the goals are going to be different. And the last thing you're going to want to do is get you know back to higher levels of body fat. You're going to be far more consciously aware of where you are. And it's easier to build muscle when you're leaner. And the reward is far greater because you get that instant gratification of being to see the results really happen in real time relatively quickly because putting even a small amount of new muscle on a lean physique shows up and there's that instant gratification. You can really be engaged in the process of changing your body. Women should be, you know, the goal should be to be under 20% body fat. And if you want to be like elite, lean, you know, pushing more towards that 16% body fat for women. That, you know, for lack of a better term, 16%, you know, 16, 18% on a woman who has some muscularity. I mean, that's, that's a beautiful place to be. So yes, wherever you are now, step one should be getting lean, altering your diet to start removing excess body fat because every step that you take towards removing excess body fat, every time the body fat comes down, all good things start to improve. Now, you should still be training in the gym. Like, there's, there's nothing crazier to me than when people say, yeah, I want to lose some weight first, and then I'll go to the gym. I'm going to lose some weight first before I start lifting weights. That's insane. You need to do them both right now. But you need to eat in a manner that has you freeing up stored body fat as the primary goal right now. And still lifting weight, and by lifting that weight you're going to send a signal to hold on to what existing muscle that you have because your body sees the need for it because you are engaged in the process of pushing yourself intensely under resistance or under load. So it says, oh, well, this person is engaging in this regular activity. So in order for us to handle this regular activity, we need to maintain as much lean mass as possible. Even though we don't really have the physiological environment to pack on a lot of muscle right now while we're losing all this body fat and somewhat of an energy deficit, it's still important to hang on to it. And if you're listening to me or others like me, then you realize that while you're going through this division of macros and energy ceiling that is conducive to giving up body fat, you're going to be taking in an adequate amount of protein, which the combination of heavy strength training with adequate protein intake, that's the formula of the body holding on to existing muscle. So you're losing body fat, you're holding on to what existing muscle you have, you're just becoming better. And then let's say you get down to that, you know, guys, sub 14% body fat, women, sub 20% body fat, looking good, feeling good, life is good. Then you can kind of turn the knobs on your energy intake, pull those calories, whatever you want to call it, amount of effective energy up to a degree 
that lends to being in a slight energy surplus, which is the best environment to be in to build muscle. And clearly, you want to be consuming adequate amounts of animal-based foods, which are the best foods to consume to build and grow new, mu new muscle mass. Animal protein, healthy animal fats, steak and eggs, you know the drill. Now, yes, I often say you don't want to be in an energy deficit or caloric deficit for too long because you can start to have some diminishing returns because the body doesn't feel like it's being fed well enough and it starts to slow its metabolic processes or could even get to the point where you're in danger of hormone dysregulation. So let's say because of the amount of body fat that you're holding on to that it may take you six months to get down to that level of leanness that we've discussed then I still think you need to do that in well-regulated chunks of periodized portions of time of changing things up a little bit and how much effective energy you're taking in. So you might want to be in an energy deficit for six weeks and then maybe take a diet break for two weeks 30 days, and then go back down into your deficit and kind of do this as you're reducing your levels of body fat to keep the body sort of confused as to what's going on. And you're not in such an energy deficit for so long that your body starts to think that it's under duress from lack of nutrients and, and again, slows everything down. Does that make sense? You could also do caloric or energy refeeds. This is something that I do with a lot of my clients. I have those clients that really, they're at a point where they don't handle carbohydrates very well. Even though I have some of them taking in a small amount around their training, because there are, can be benefits to that, there are some clients that I work with and some people that I deal with in, in my consultations that I do, where giving a big whack of carbohydrates via a refeed would not be the best thing for them in that point in time. And there, I'm sure there are many of you watching this where you're saying, yeah, I, I can't go eat 400 grams of carbs on a, on a Saturday and do a carb refeed. I'll, I'll go off the freaking rails. I sympathize with that. I understand that. So what I will do is I will do regular caloric refeeds, meaning let's just say hypothetically, let's say hypothetically you're consuming 2,100 calories and you've got your macros divided in a manner that is conducive to getting rid of excess body fat. Maybe you're, you know, you're sort of close to kind of that one-to-one -one percentage ratio between protein and fat. Uh, maybe you've dialed down the fat a little bit. You've raised that protein a little bit to maybe like 35, 40% of your intake because you're trying to create that environment to free up stored body fat. That's great. So what I might have someone in that case do, if, let's just say hypothetically that 2,100 calories is a slight deficit, energy deficit, that allows your body to start freeing up stored body fat, then I might once a week or once a month, or just depends on the individual, have a day where I will give them a caloric refeed. So I might give them the same division of macros, say 50% fat and, you know, 35% protein and a small amount of carbs, but I might bring all of that up to slightly above their energy maintenance. So let's say an energy deficit is 2,100 calories for this particular individual, but 2,600 calories is a slight energy surplus. Then I might say, okay, you know, this Saturday, still eat the same clean animal-based foods, still very, very hyper carnivore, but just bring up the effective energy to a level that sends a signal, a, a satiety signal to your body that says, oh, we're being well fed today. And that's like throwing a little gas on the fire. It's like adjusting the thermostat. And it's giving your body a signal that you are well fed and well nourished and you can continue your current healthy metabolic processes and continue to free up stored body fat because you don't have to cling on to it because you're not starving to death. 
body's very smart and we have to keep it a little confused. You have to keep it a little knocked off balance. So that's a clever way to do that. Much in the same way that I tell people if things start to stall in your fat burning efforts, throw in a protein fast or a protein day. You, I'm sure you've seen that video by now if you haven't checked it out. So you could do these energy refeeds once a month, twice a month, whatever. But then you could also throw in some of these protein fasts as well, one, two a week, or maybe one every other week or whatever, depending on what you've been advised to do. So you've got a lot going on that keeps your body kind of confused and guessing and keeps things moving along. I've seen spectacular results using some of these hacks, if you will. So yes, even though it may take some time that you need to be in an energy deficit to get down to those body fat levels that I'd mentioned, you know, men under 14%, women under 20%, let's say you're holding on to quite a bit of body fat right now, which is fine, we'll, we'll get there. Sometimes, so you're not in, you know, don't get caught in the trap. I guess what I'm trying to say is don't get caught in the trap of more is better. In other words, more deficit is better. So if, if you know, 2,100 calories is a slight energy deficit, don't think, oh, well, then I'm going to go to 18 or 14 or 12. Because I promise you, if you go too deep on an energy deficit for too long, there's going to be a point where things sort of level off and everything will stop. You need to be nourished. The body needs to know that it's being adequately nourished to fulfill its requirements for healthy energy processes, hormonal output, recovery, repair, et cetera, performance even. So that's how I have to throw little hacks at it. When you get to a point where you're in, you know, you've lost all the body fat you want to lose. You've got to that sub 14 guys, sub 20 women, and now you're going to engage in a period of time where you're going to be in a slight energy surplus. And the goal is to now pack on some muscle. That's a really fun place to be because you don't have to be quite so strategic in shaking things up a lot. As long as you keep nourishing yourself to a degree where it's not spilling over as a bunch of fat, then you're going to be building muscle. You're going to be performing great. You're going to be crushing it in the gym. You're going to be sleeping well. You're going to be feeling awesome. So that's a cool place to be. But we got to get there first. Again, lean out without crushing your metabolism and then build up from a point of leanness. Body fat is bad. Muscle is life. Train hard in the gym. The greatest amount of intensity that you can put forth in the gym in the shortest amount of time possible. Feed your body healthy, animal-based hypercarnivore foods. Get some movement in. If you can't get in 12 to 15,000 steps a day through your daily activity, then go for a couple of walks a week. Do a little cardio. Doesn't have to be super strenuous. Try to do it outside where you're getting some fresh air, sun on your skin, and vitamin D on dynamic terrain. Prioritize sleep and recovery. I mean, that's the formula. So, to answer the question, should I gain or should I cut? Cut first, get to that point of leanness because everything is better within your body when you have less body fat. And then once that is achieved, then pull out of that into a period of time of slight energy surplus and maybe ramp it up a little bit in the gym and have that be the focus. That's a fun place to be. Both rewarding, both necessary. So I hope that makes sense. So I've, I've solved the puzzle. I have answered the ancient age old question. Should I gain or should I cut? Cut first, then gain. I've given you the parameters. 
now you can go rock with it. So there it is, kids. Another huge nugget of wis wisdom from Coach Rob. You're welcome. Subscribe to my channel if you want to say thanks. Leave a comment. Hit the thumbs up guy. And I will have another video for you on Tuesday at 4 o'clock. Train hard, diet harder, but above all else, do whatever you have to do to have a great day. Cheers.